So how are you? I'm good. Stuck inside the, uh, during this Corona time. So. Yeah, is everything shut down in Norway as well? Yeah, everything. Uh, schools, some jobs, uh, no training, training halls, everything shut down. Yeah, when did that when did that start over there? Uh, two weeks ago now, I think. Yeah, two and a half weeks. Yeah, we're until about week three, I think. Oh, you started so, earlier than us. Maybe a little bit. They kind of closed schools and colleges and stuff like that first, and then they um, then they kind of closed everything else and gyms and stuff. Maybe a week after that. Yeah. So. Missing training. <laughs> yeah, me too. Been trained. I got a injury, so I haven't been training for a while now, as you can see. I tear uh, my, uh, it's called my pec. Yeah. I tore it off the bone. <laughs> oh, training. Nasty. So, nasty. Yeah. Was that taekwondo training or gym or? No, it was just gym strength, uh, strength training in the weight room. Yeah, bench press. Yeah, actually, <laughs> it was. <laughs> was it? Yeah. It wasn't mid lift or anything, was it? Are we good? Yeah. Yeah, you kind of dropped out there for just a second. But uh, so you were you were you were going to be out of Euros, were you? Uh, well, that was the thing. I felt like the pot, and uh, I took like a week off and started getting better because I didn't think I like did it all the way off the bone, like the tendon and the muscle. And uh, I felt like I can punch again. And I couldn't do push-ups, but I felt like it was getting better. Then I got an MR, and it said it was torn off the bone, so I had to like get a surgery. And I got a surgery a week ago. And uh, the, yeah, but the Euros got cancelled. As well, so it was like ah, uh, yeah. So it kind of worked out. Gives you a chance to recover and heal up. Yeah. It was the surgery I'll be out? like six months, but I don't think there will be any competitions for at least eight months, nine. Maybe in the na- next time I'll be in a competition will be the nationals. That's November, is it? Yeah, it's November. Yeah. I feel like the World Cup might get cancelled as well. Yeah, I don't think the World Cup's going to happen. I think it's going to end up being cancelled. Yeah. It's a shame I was looking forward to this World Cup. I heard like that every ITF organization could join. It wasn't only our ITF. Yeah, it was going to be open, which could have been cool, yeah. Yeah, a big one. They're, they're big enough anyway, so imagine then you open it up to those countries, how big it would be. Yeah. Or those organizations or countries. I was curious to see how like the levels are at the, the I, other ITFs. Yeah, because some of them have like different rules. You can only like punch... I think two two punches in a row and then you have to kick and then there's another one they have a, sometimes another rule where you have to spin if you just attempt to spin you get a point yeah so. I've seen some like some highlight videos of the good Russian competitors from there actually some yeah. minus six seven uh, I know the guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I know the guy yeah he's good yeah I thought does he still compete I don't know much about him if he still competes or whatever but yeah he's good I think yeah. he's multiple time world champion yeah, I saw like a video there, and it was like if the two best guys in ITF should compete, it was like this Russian guy in minus fifty-seven and uh, Julio in sixty-three. Like that was a dream matchup. <laughs> Could be interesting, yeah. Yeah. The different types, yeah, two different styles. So how is it? Uh, like your gyms or everything is closed, right? 
everything is closed down. Yeah, nothing, nothing's going. Yeah. No we, instructions or nothing. No, we've been doing some. Uh, there's, we've been putting out some bits online to try and keep uh, members yeah, I've seen that. engaged. But uh, but yeah, no, we closed right at the start. The first when the clo- when the schools closed, we closed yeah. as well, um, because we didn't think there was much point to staying open, especially if uh, if people weren't going to be coming along to the class then. It's like, what's the point in being open if nobody's going to show up even? So it was like, well, we'll stay safe and just shut down. But yeah. we were, we were Does hoping the online thing weeks, work? But, uh, I think it works a small bit like that just to keep keep uh, engaged with, with members. You know, like if you take two weeks off, three weeks off, and we don't know when it's going to end, to not be in contact with any of your members isn't isn't great. So it's a way to keep them active with some bit in Taekwondo and stay stay engaged. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, I've started doing the same. That they post different exercises you can do at home and stuff like that. Yeah, well, not the same as being there in person. Yeah. But um, so uh, how did how did you get started in taekwondo? Uh, I started in taekwondo when I was like. I think I was 14 or 13, I think. So I think I started a bit late, considering yeah. like like most people start when they're like six now and five. So <laughs> Some kids started three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I did like uh, different sports before I started. I did uh, like wrestling when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I'm from Chechnya, so it's like bound to happen. Like that's the natural sport, I think. Like Khabib. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, then I, I didn't like go to gymnastics, but I did like gymnastics. Uh, like I learned myself how to do gymnastics because I was super interested in that for some reason. And I started doing taekwondo at thirteen, fourteen uh, here in Bergen. Uh, I think I was in the same class with Madeline. I think was I was, I don't know. I think so. I think she, uh, her, and me was we both were in the same class when we started together. But she was like a blue belt or something when I was a white belt. <laughs> I was gonna say she wasn't the black belt and you were a white belt or anything like that. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does people start like coming on going to European championships and world championships at 14 and you were only starting yeah I don't know but in like in Norway you don't allow, I don't think you're allowed to compete in you're not allowed to be on a national team and compete in the Euros or the Worlds until you're like 16 I think I think they change it now to 15 okay yeah, that could help. It's like I've said, and I've said to a couple of people, like it's a big jump if you've just turned fourteen and you're against somebody who's who's eighteen, and it's your first Euros or Worlds, and the other person has four, five, maybe even six tournaments behind them. It's like such a massive yeah. difference. Yeah, considering in our sport, like the experience is like the main thing. You need that. Yeah, yeah, like so it's so big like that saying. As people keep saying, it's rare that you just walk onto the onto the floor of first championships and pick up a medal. Yeah, well, some do. You have like wonder kids like uh, Vitali and stuff like that. But yeah, <laughs> and Ryan Ryan won, it, Ryan won his first Euros as well. Yeah, Shelley. Yeah, I, I yeah. heard a story about him. Uh, like, told Richie told me it. Uh, in the, I talked to Richie at Open Dutch like this year. Yeah, and he said like Ryan was standing. Uh, I think the first time Ryan was at a championship was when Richie won. Twenty ten, yeah, it? yeah, one hundred percent. Ryan was there. He was just like picture. standing there in a yeah red hoodie and observing. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Ryan's been on the was on the podcast. Uh, that episode will go out maybe it will go out tomorrow, but uh, he he talks about that as well, and Richie spoke about it as well when he was on the podcast. So um, about that picture, so I must. Just go and find a picture and post it. Yeah. 
it's a, it's a cool picture. And now only MMA for him and Adam, right? Yeah, they're just doing MMA at the moment, yeah. But like that, their their gym is closed, so they're sitting at home like the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> he... He's a European champion as well, right, Ryan? Yeah, he won only he only won one senior. He only competed at one senior and he won it. And then he was, I think, three times junior European champion. Yeah, I saw the fight. Uh, I think it was against Timothy on YouTube. From from when? Uh, this year on. Ah, uh, 2014, yeah. You see everything. I have been competing as much, but I've seen everything on YouTube. You see I everything. Some, I had some catching up to do. Oh, I remember uh, me and uh, Espen uh, were like, before each competition, Yeah. we we'll like just search random names and see how they sparred because... I was new in the game and he wasn't, he had been, I don't think he has competed like that much. Uh, if you compare with like someone who has, I don't know, like, I don't know, competes like Timothy or something. But in Norway, we don't compete. I mean, we compete Euros, Worlds, and maybe one international championship. So, yeah. Is there many yeah, tournaments? Yeah, I remember like, we. Around Norway, like throughout the year, like national tournaments. Yeah, we have the nationals, but it's like I don't consider that, that like a uh, uh, huge competition. But yeah, I suppose if so, you're winning, it's not a big competition. Huh? If you're winning it, it's not a big competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't mean to sound cocky, but like, <laughs> yeah. No, I consider it a big competition like the World Cup, uh, World Euros, stuff like that. Yeah, they're the most the... important competitions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a we have a couple of competitions. Like you can have like three national tournaments, and then like you said, you have Euros, Worlds, World Cups, and then if yeah. you have to kind of go to Dutch Open or Open Dutch, Roma Open. To yeah, get like to that's the main thing. competition we go to usually, the uh, Dutch Open. Yeah, it's, it's very early in the year, though. Do you think? Yeah, it kind of is, but it's a good start. Just like jump into it. And uh, <laughs> since Billy is our national coach, we have to be there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that makes sense. All right, yeah. <laughs> he makes that compulsory to get on the team, does he? <laughs> huh? He makes that compulsory. You have to go to the Open Dutch if you want to be on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he notices when you're there or not so he lets you know but it's a good competition it's a pretty high class competition a lot of good competitors compete there yeah a lot of good divisions even this year a lot of good divisions yeah. and uh, so it's that with starting like into taekwondo late or like kind of relative to everybody else did you compete much then as a color belt I don't think so. I thought uh, uh, I thought of doing sparring when I was red belt or blue belt, I think. And we had like small national championships in like Bergen, the place I'm living right now. And only competed there and competed at the nationals uh, for the first time as red belt, I think. So, uh, how long did it take you to get to black? Belt? Huh? How long did it take you to get to black belt? Uh, six years, I think. Yeah, okay. but that's the average, isn't it? Like six years. Yeah, it took me. Took me six, five and a half, six years. Yeah. Some like I have uh, students now who are like twelve years old and they have like black belt now. So, oh yeah, it's insane. You know, in Ireland, you're not allowed to grade the black belt until you're at least thirteen. Oh, you have to wait. Huh? Yeah, so it's kind of good then because you know 
you don't have too long to wait before you can go for the national team. Yeah. So. You have a very young national team now, right? don't you? The Ireland. I was the oldest one on the team this year. You were? Uh, yeah. 25. So After uh, after Ireland, the world championships in Dublin, I feel like a lot of good competitors just quit the team. Yeah. A new... Yeah. Uh, we had people who retired who were around like for a while, like Darren Smith and, and Ross. They kind of they stepped away. Luke Woods, they stepped away, and then Adam and Ryan went to to MMA. Uh, Colum stepped away. He's doing some MMA now as well. Um, so yeah, we were just left. It was like Hong stayed on. Uh, Stephen Smolin was stayed on, and then uh, they've both stepped away since. So it left me as the the oldest guy. <laughs> You're not planning on stepping away, are you now? No, no. Gonna keep going. Uh, you to and Thomas. <laughs> me, me and Thomas, yeah. Well, like, Hong did 10 worlds and 10 euros. And I've done five worlds and 10 euros. So, kind of see, could we, uh, how close could I get to, to catching him or, or, may, or maybe beating what he's, what he's done? 10 worlds? 10 world championships, yeah. That's insane. Yeah, 20 years of competing. Uh, you retired as a champion, so it's pretty good for him. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And um, it was kind of funny because after the Worlds in Germany, he had bronze and he was kind of saying, no, that's it, I'll, I'll step away. But uh, I had a chat with him at the, on the Sunday over a, a dinner and a drink. And I kind of told him, no, Hong, you can't step away with 10 Worlds and 9 Euros. You have to go and uh, retire with 10 and 10. <laughs> and, uh, and I, and I and then he I could see it in his eye that he kind of went there was just something about that like ten worlds ten euros hmm maybe Smart six decision months. yeah so that, and then like but I don't think he necessarily did it thinking he was like going to win or I think he just did it to you know compete the best he could go out like with the strongest way he could ten and ten and then yeah. obviously went and all the way like so yeah it's a pretty class way to go out mm. yeah he's been on top for a long while now. But like he was like he's been on the team as long as I've been on the team. So this was gonna be the first year he pretty much wasn't. Yeah. But, but like that, it was kinda of years you're like, Hong, are you going to retire now? Like this was back in nearly twenty thirteen, you were asking him, Hong, are you gonna are you gonna retire now? And he was like, Ah we will see. We'll see. We'll but and he just kept coming back and a year like seven seven years later he's still he was still going. <laughs> yeah. But he's in good shape, I think. Like he trains a lot, so he's capable of sparring. So I don't see why he couldn't compete for so long. Yeah, and he tra- he's, he's doing. He's... Go on. He's doing uh, patterns as well, right? So. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. He could do that. He didn't. He doesn't have to do sparring now. He could just do patterns. I don't think he wants to. He's a he's a fighter at heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what age then were you when you came onto the national team? Uh, I think the first time was in Yeslo, in Italy. Twenty fifteen. Was that two thousand fifteen? Yeah. Were you you weren't yeah. junior, were you? No, I never competed as junior. Not even one. Uh no, I don't think so. My first like championships was in Brighton. Okay, I was a yeah. senior then. Uh, the World Cup. Yeah, I got destroyed in the first round. Lost to some Polish guy. Yeah, and then, uh, you, don't, you don't remember who he was, no. I feel like it's the pattern guy in third degree now, but. I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> I don't totally uh, remember who he was. Marcin? Marcin Vranovsky? Yeah, I think it was him. Okay. But I'm not what? sure. You surely I remember. I don't know how old he is. You know everybody. You surely remember. Yeah, if I see a picture, I probably <laughs> remember. <laughs> yeah, he's around He's around ages, like years. Marcin. He's been, a, yeah, he's been on team for a while, hasn't he? Years. So it, it might he be him. For a long time. He was a first degree for a long time. 
Yeah. Yeah, he I got destroyed by him. <laughs> yeah, he came to he came to Ireland to do a seminar in our club and he was a first degree and I was about a green belt or a blue tag. And uh so like that's this was back nearly fifteen years ago. And uh I've since passed him out. I'm fourth degree and he he's third degree. I passed him out on the grades. He just stayed first degree for so long. Yeah, but I don't feel like the uh, Polish competitors grade that often. Some of them have been like, uh, who's the Zyk, I think. He's still yeah. second degree. He might even be first degree. He might even be first degree. Or is he first degree? <laughs> Could be, yeah. Uh, he's picked up a few medals in first degree patterns as far as I know. So, unless he's graded since, but uh, like that, he's only recently graded. So, yeah, uh, first degree for years as well. The only like the competitor I think has been grading very fast is Camille. I think he's I think he's fourth degree now. Is he? I think so. And he's <laughs> twenty one, I think. <laughs> twenty two. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of young guys coming through up to fourth degree. Myself yeah. included. <laughs> How long do you have to wait until you, have, you can uh, grade to five? Wait four years, so the December next year, 2021, I can grade to fifth degree. So, so you want a master, Jamie? I, I'll have to. I'll I'll probably have to wait quite a while before I can grade to masters because you have to be you have to be 40. So I'll definitely be. At yeah, you have, yeah, yeah. I forgot you have to have like an age limit before you can grade. Yeah. I think I think you can get it. I think you can apply to the ITF to maybe get an exemption. Um, how often they they give them out? I, I, I yeah, don't you do like a lot of IITs and skip half a year each time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that many IICs. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done I've done one on an IIC, and uh, it's not the most not the most um, enjoyable, should I say? Um, it's okay, but. Uh, They've doing the, the pattern section drags on a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> so, but and, is, and is there a rule in Ireland that if you do an IIC, you skip like six months? That used to be a rule from the ITF, but I don't know if that's still the case. There was a change back, I think, about twenty fifteen ish. So I don't know if it's still. It used to take six months, but I don't know if that's still the case. Yeah, that rule doesn't apply here in Norway. It doesn't, or it does? No, it doesn't. You have to wait regardless of IICs or not. <laughs> yeah, so slows people down. Yeah. So first one. The like, first. Just... Yeah, go on. The first uh, uh, competition was in on the national team was in Yesolo. I lost in the. Who did I lose? I lost to uh, Jason Bin. You remember him, from England. Yeah. 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 And yeah, we had a close fight. Uh, I lost an extra round against him. I think he took bronze that championship. And yeah, I think he lost to Adam in the semi-final. Yeah. That was the time when. Uh, the reign of Shelly started. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And the next champion was in Scotland, the Euros. Yeah. I lost to Rossi. Samuel Rossi. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't been. Finland. Yeah. Yeah, he's... I don't think he's doing Taekwondo anymore. I haven't seen him for a while on champion. I think that was his last one. Huh? I think that was his last championships, was it? Scotland. So he competed in Finland as well. Oh, that makes sense. But yeah, so that would be yeah. that would be the last one. Yeah, I think so. Maybe that was the last one. Did you find like after uh, twenty fifty in Jesolo, um Did you find it was an ex- kind of like an eye opener? You kind of saw like, all right, the standard is this is the standard that you have to get to to be able to win. Uh, it was more different than I thought. Like, I feel like before you could win 
just by being tough. Yeah. Like just by being a fighter, you know, like just grinding through it all. But later, you have to be more tactical. It's more like a game. Yeah, you can survive on warnings and like jumping out of the ring, stuff like that. So it's not just about fighting. So I adapt more to the stuff like being more tactical instead of fighting all the time because I got a lot of minus points for like hard contact. <laughs> <laughs> got disqualified quite quite some time. So yeah, it helped me. I become a better fighter by being more tactical. Yeah. Was, uh, I think even like there, when I first came onto the team, in Irish competitions, there wasn't, um, you never really had a scoreboard. It was always like on the clickers. So you never knew during the match if you were winning or anything. So you just have to wait till yeah, the end, yeah. see what color they put up. And then the first time you go to a championships and you see the, you see the score on the screen and you start seeing like you get a warning and it flips the score. Like, but before you, yeah. you weren't used to, you weren't used to seeing that because you didn't really think that warnings affected the score because you couldn't see the score. But then, like when you can actually see the score on the on the screen, it really makes you start to think like, oh well, I can't be picking up warnings, can't be picking up minus points. They actually do make a difference in the fight. Yeah. Well, they sometimes I uh, I don't want to say which championship, but they started wrestling doing the thing with the flags and the clickers because they never get the, like the computer stuff to work. Yeah. So like end up just yeah. So yeah, that's a horrible uh way to spar, like not knowing if you're leading or definitely changes it, yeah. Changes the yeah. the tactics. It helps seeing who's leading and not. Well, it's like that even. But what would you think about like the likes of um MMA and boxing if they had open scoring like that? Yeah, I think that would be better, actually. Do you think so? Maybe, uh, like, yeah, I think it helps to see, like, let's say in MMA in the fifth round and you know you're down, like, three rounds and you, need, you either need a submission or a knockout, then you go all out to get the win. But you've, like, yeah. uncertain and you think, like, oh, maybe I'm winning two, maybe I'm winning three. I think, yeah, but I think everybody looks at it like that, like that. Oh, the person who's losing is going to really push for the for the finish. But what about the person who's leading? If they start to change and just go, I'm just going to run away, then like it will completely spoil the fight. It would work really well if the person who was leading still wanted to kind of keep their game plan going and keep attacking. But if they're going to just run away and just spoil and and not really engage in the fight it could actually spoil it yeah but isn't that a part of the fight game like if you're winning you should be able to like just not get hit and move and stuff like that you don't yeah. always have to be in the clinch <laughs> yeah that's what I think what happened is you'd see guys just clinching on the fence and just w waste the time on the no I'm not like I'd like to see what it looked like because I I think it will be interesting to to tr try it out and see what happens. Yeah. Isn't like boxing and UFC or MMA the only like martial arts that don't have a live score? I think so, yeah. I yeah, because so. wrestling does and uh, karate does as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, jiu-jitsu does. Jiu-jitsu uh, jiu does. All of those. Yeah. Actually, I suppose maybe like full contact kickboxing or in Muay Thai. Or you? Uh, no, like Muay Thai, they don't have open scoring. Yeah, uh, maybe it's like ring sports don't have live yeah, scores. So, yeah. Do contact Vaco have live scores? Full contact Vaco in a ring? I'm not sure. I think they might do, actually. I think they do. Yeah, I think they do. Because there's so many, they have to throw, I think isn't there a rule they have to They have to kick, like or throw so many kicks in a certain time so they can't just use their hands. Yeah. 
So I think, uh, so I think they, they see the score. <laughs> so uh, after, after. Uh, Say so 2015 in Scotland, uh, you kind of you fought Adam a good few times, and after that, how many times did you fight against Adam? Uh, I fought Adam twice. Once only twice. In... Huh? It was only twice. For some reason, I thought like maybe you fought like, four times. I had it in my head you, you competed against each other a bit more than twice. <laughs> no, I actually fought Adam. Twice, I think I fought him once in Finland. Uh, I met him in the first round, and the second time was in uh, Bulgaria, in Sofia. We met each other in the final. The final, yeah. That was good competition. Yeah. It was, uh, that was a. Uh, Maybe you're, uh, I think Ludwig has met him a couple of times as well. Maybe you're just mixing us. Yeah, they, yeah, I've definitely seen him. Yeah, they have fought. They fought, I'd say, four times. Yeah, they fought a lot. I think. Yeah, a lot of close matches as well. Yeah, Ludwig yeah. won once in Brighton, I think. Yeah, that was the first time. Yeah, quarterfinals. Yeah, quarterfinals. Uh, yeah. Shelley fought him. In the DC owner. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, and the World Championships in Ireland. Yeah, so four times. Yeah, mm. they're, they're very similar in style, aren't they? Because like, they all have that long range front leg. Yeah. Oh, I hate that style. <laughs> it's the style that goes well, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The front <laughs> leg style works every time. Like just doing psychic, psychic, psychics. Yeah, like it was. Um, I think you know, like at a junior, the way the divisions kind of there's new people in the division all the time. So, so it's very hard, you know, like plan for who's going to be there. Like you, especially as well, you have people moving up divisions more often. If you're tall and have a good front leg, so you probably do pretty okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. I remember, uh, uh, I think Shelly was like, how tall is Shelly? Do you know? 6'3". Yeah, so he's pretty tall for 70. He would be tall for 78, I think, as well. Yeah, he, yeah, he would, yeah. He would, he be, would be tall for Colin. Yeah. yeah, I think Colin's a little bit taller, but still like that. Adam isn't going to be small in that division. I always felt like Adam was like the best because of his height before and uh, then he started using his hands <laughs> I was like ah, it's not just the legs <laughs> it's the hands yeah. as well yeah he started doing uh, a good lot of a uh, good lot of boxing so he started doing some boxing so that really improved his hands then as well yeah a lot of Irish uh, national team members are doing boxing now, aren't they I think some of the girls are doing boxing. Jenny does boxing, yeah. She's the only one? Yeah, like, I think, I think Katie, Katie Laffin has done maybe some boxing at, at certain points. Um, but, like, Jenny's the only one actually training, like, consistently. She does it through, the, through college. So, uh, yeah, she's the, really the only one. <laughs> But uh, like the competitors do, like I don't know. I know the both uh, Shelley brothers did kickboxing, uh, and some other people did like Vakos Irish Open. Uh, they yeah, had more. Uh, yeah, but a lot of those they they jump into the the Irish Open pretty much every year, um, but that's kind of they wouldn't train in a kickboxing club. A lot of them train just in the Taekwondo club and enter the the kickboxing tournaments. You went but to a lot of tournaments, didn't you? Yeah, I went to uh, the World Cup 
in Budapest with uh, the German uh, German team. Yeah, how did that come about? Yeah, I got destroyed in points. Different world. <laughs> yeah, but in the live contact, I got to this uh, quarterfinals against the winner from Guatemala or something. Strange, so, quite. It's a fun experience. What weight division was that? Mine is, was that 69? Yeah, 69. And how did you end up competing for Germany? Uh, well, I knew Alamin for a bit, and we don't have like kickboxing clubs in Bergen. Or we like, I think we have two, but I haven't trained in them, and I don't know anyone who does. So I just asked Alamin if he was going to the World Cup, and uh, he said, Yeah, and I'm he said I could join them if I wanted to compete for their uh, club. So it was a great experience. But they compete, I think, all the time in Waco and ITF. Yeah. They can get to, they can get to countries pretty easy as well. They can drive. Yeah, it's pretty close to everything. Like in the middle. Yeah, we have to fly everywhere. So that kind of stops yeah. us going so so many tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's uh, good for ITF fighters to do Valko as well. You get yeah. better with the hands, and it's a good experience. Yeah, you see a lot of the the guys who do really well in Waco, especially light contact, are they tend to be guys who uh, who are fairly good at taekwondo as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Adam, Ryan, Timothy. Yeah. Colin, Especially Timothy, Colin, he's like four-time world champion in Locals. Yeah, yeah, he does nearly. He nearly does better in Waco than he does. Uh, Has he won world, world championship in sparring? Uh, Taekwondo. Not senior. He won the the worlds in 2013 in Benidorm, minus 62. So he hasn't won a. Uh, a senior yet? No, as one senior yet. Yeah, but he has like no. horrible draws. Yeah, so he his draws in uh, the world. It was like the best three people in the first round. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. Did he fought? He fought Bustamante first, wasn't it? And then he fought Julio. Yeah, Bustamante then Julio. Yeah. But they, yeah, but they all met each other as well in the worlds in Ireland as well. They were all in the same the same half. Yeah, they were. They were uh, him and uh, it was him, Timothy Bustamante, Julio, Timothy Bustamante, McGrath, and Rostick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that was. It was crazy that, that that half of that draw was a lot of good people. But Rosti went for Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> his national he's originally from Ukraine, right? Yeah, yeah, he's from Ukraine. He's been yeah. like but most of his most of his life he's been uh he's been in Ireland. But just uh with the two guys, Luke and uh, Ryan had the spot, so he ended up competing for Ukraine. So, well, he got the best of both worlds when you're like talking and sparring. You have Ukraine and Ireland. <laughs> yeah, he used to. I think um, he was telling a story before that he, like, during the summers when he go back to Ukraine, he would train with uh, Katya and Oleg. So that's how we kind of knew them as well. They're from the same town. Oh. So. I was like he was getting good training here, but then when he was in Ukraine for training, he was getting good training there as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have good uh, competitors in that club too, especially now. They have a lot of European and world champions. The uh, Solovey. Uh, yeah, but they've they've really started like finding more 
finding more competitors. You know, before they were only bringing small teams, but now they're bringing much bigger teams. Mm. Like yeah. even, um, I think it's as well because uh, Maximenko, he has people from his club going to tournaments now. Yeah, he was. He used to be a Oleg student, right? Yeah, and now he has his own club, so uh, he has more people. So I think that's helped fill out their team. Yeah, yeah I, I think never got to see him compete. Yeah, he was. Um, he competed in the Euros in 2012 in Slovenia. He competed at minus 70, and he fought. Tw- oh, he was in my white class. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who he fought. I think it was the Polish guy. Camille was his name. I can't remember his second name. It wasn't uh, Dabolowski. It's the Benidorm Camille. Yes. In my understanding. Yeah, Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he beat beat Maximenko at the Euros in Slovenia in 2012. Was he the champion in my understanding in 2012? No, he didn't win a uh, Hong won the Hong won the division. It was actually minus seventy one. Oh, Hong won it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was him against uh, Slovenian guy Rudolf Grega. Yeah, yeah, that was a great fight. Yeah, I saw I saw that fight actually yesterday on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It was it was a great fight. There was all the guys like because Grega was from Maribor, so there was all his like he had guys around the. Do you know the arena in Slovenia? The windows, yeah, yeah. Well, he there was guys with flares. So outside, all the windows was just red smoke all the way around. As they were shouting, "Greg, Greg," it was crazy. It was crazy atmosphere. Like uh, football hooligans. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I heard a story yeah. about that. That he was like <laughs> a football hooligan or something. <laughs> I don't know if he was, but some of the guys that. Uh, we came around to the tournament were like that had that kind of vibe yeah <laughs> yeah he's my one of the guys I wish was still competing so I could fight him Gregor Rudolf that would be a good fight because you both like to fight he looks like a, yeah he looks like a fighter not like a tactical kind of guy yeah I think he would uh, he'd struggle now at minus points I think in the way Taekwondo is now. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, in so no in Maribor the Euros. Like in only minus seventy, I think like four people got disqualified. Like three people in the same ring. It was. It was like three people in the same ring. Like oh, <laughs> it was yeah. like, it was like I remember Camille got disqualified as well. When I got disqualified, I saw him get disqualified. And Ian That's got disqualified too. Ian got disqualified as well. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> and I think somebody else got disqualified as well. It's. Yeah. It kind of ruined that division because like there was a lot of good matches that were going to happen there, and uh, the disqualifications ruined it. Yeah, I think Zik won that time. Yeah, against uh, the guy from uh, Bosnia. Bosnia, yeah. Well, he, he was he was losing he was losing to Camille until Camille got disqualified. Yeah, Camille makes some bad decisions sometimes. Or, or the referee does. Oh, or the referee does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And do you feel like that um, not competing as a junior at the Euros of Worlds? You feel like it kind of set you back a small bit when you did come onto the national team. Would you have liked to have had a bit of a time as a junior? Yeah, of course it would. It wouldn't be negative. I think it only only. I think it like uh, considering, like experience wise, not competing as junior was like my biggest mistake. Because I quit like taekwondo for two years. I think also after. Uh, after 2012, I quit for like two years. So it's been very off and on. What What made you quit for that bit of time? Uh, I went to the army, so I was oh, really? kind of tired of taekwondo as well. So 
I wanted to do something else. How long did so you were you in the army for that full two years or? No, I was uh, in the army for one year. And then just got got bored of that as well. <laughs> no, because we have like uh, we have like mandatory uh, service in Norway where you have to serve one year. Okay. So it was just that. So, but I wanted to join it as well. It's like it's. They say it's mandatory, but you can you can get out of it if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did they have that in um, like Russia as well in Chechnya? Have to do military service. Uh, well, I haven't been there for quite a while, and I moved from Chechnya when I was like six years old. So the army was never an option for me there. Yeah, but was it that kind of influence, maybe, that your your kind of uh, heritage that kind of prompted you to want to join the army? <laughs> uh, maybe. I don't know. Perhaps. But I have, like, a Russian citizenship as well. So if I went back there when I was 19 or 18, I think, I'd probably have to join the army, but stayed in Norway. <laughs> That's why you haven't been there for quite a few years. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> and uh, so they like within the within the worlds in Germany is obviously your biggest achievement in uh, taekwondo. Yeah. And uh, how many matches? Did, how many matches did you have? Was it five or did you have many, or did you happen to have six? In Germany. Yeah. Uh, I think I was supposed to have six, but the first match, it was against someone from Tajikistan or something. And <laughs> yeah. We didn't, didn't meet up, so it was only five. Yeah, I had good matches there. <sighs> who, did you, who, did you, who did you fight? You fought Camille. I fought uh, Luca from uh, Italy, then oh, Camille, yeah. uh, and then I fought Ahmed from Germany. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And Al- Al- then, yeah, and then someone from Russia, Alexander or something. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only saw the, I saw the guy. Yeah. He hasn't been at many championships. I think he's quite new, actually. He won the European Cup in Russia. Well, that was like a Russian championship. It's not really a European Cup. Yeah, it was more like a <laughs> Russian championships in Russia in Sochi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, then I think it was. Uh, Nils in yeah, it was Nils in the final. Nils Knopf from Germany. Yeah, cool. So some good fights on the way today. The gold medal. Yeah, it was. Yeah, one of my uh, I think hardest competitions to date. Did you? Because I had like uh, I didn't I didn't train for like three four weeks before the championships. Because I had like a blood infection or something, uh, a virus. So I had to be on uh, antibiotics for three weeks. It was uh, was 20 days to be exact. And on the first day of the championships, I was like done with my cure. Because we have to take like tablets each day yeah. for 20 days. Yeah, and I was done with like the last tablet on that day. So yeah. it was more like... I didn't expect to win. I was just like, yeah, I'll just have fun, compete. And... Do you think that helped? Like taking a bit of pressure off yourself? Yeah. I always feel like when you're competing for fun, it's like those are the times that I do best. Like if I'm nor- nervous or stuff like that before championships, I only do feel like I do bad. Yeah. So it helps being, it helped having no pressure. 
And did you hurt your ankle against that? Was it your ankle or something against Camille? Because there was a bit of... You had yeah, to stop I twist my, twist my ankle. But, yeah. You don't think too much of it, like, during the fight afterwards. You just, like, yeah. tape it up and fight along. And if you keep going, if you stop, then you start to take, start to get, like, swell up and get sore. And you're like, yeah. oh, if you just keep going, it uh, sometimes... Yeah. It doesn't uh, affect you. Yeah, but it helped having like the semi-final and the final the next day. I just, yeah, I was just going to ask, how did you? How, what did you think of that? Because I was talking to Katrina Carr the other day, and she kind of said that obviously she won as well, so it didn't completely um, throw her off. But she said she would have preferred if um, if it was all on the same day. So what did, what did you think of that? Yeah, I thought it was much better because like. I got time to heal up, uh, not but that much, but it kind of helped on the injury and uh, it helped like getting my mind off the competition and just relaxing and like thinking what I should do the next day and laying yeah. a plan instead of all happening on the same day. So for me, it was a huge, yeah, I think we should do that more often. But do you think it helped because you only had like competed on, I think it was maybe Friday and then straight in Saturday. Do you think you would feel different if you competed on the the Wednesday or the Thursday and then had to wait two or three days before you fought again? Yeah, I think that's too much. Yeah. yeah. That's only one day. Yeah, because I competed on the, the, the Friday evening. So I was like the last match on my ring. Uh, or the second last match, sorry, and then Vitali fought his quarterfinal. So that week we were the last ones on that ring, and then the tournament was finished for the day. So it was pretty much like compete, get on the bus, get some food, go to bed, get up, and then fight the next morning. So you know it all happened very quick. So I didn't have much time. So like that, it was pretty much rest up, go again. But I think like that, yeah. If you had a full day or like two days, three days to wait, it was like no. So I kind of like the way it was in Germany. I liked it but I don't know, could I wait any longer than just the next day? Mm. Yeah. But I don't, is that the first time they have had it? Like they waited like for the second day for the semifinals and the finals? Uh, yeah. First time the first time I've seen it anyway. Like mm. I've been around for quite a while. So <laughs> uh, yeah, first yeah. time I've seen it. Was it only with sparring? I don't think it was yeah. the patterns, was it? No, no, the patterns, I think they ran that straight through. I think they ran that all on the same day. Yeah. I think not. I could be wrong, but I think they ran that on the same day. Hmm. What did you think of the world? Like, you were on, I suppose you were on the center stage, but what did you think of having the the semifinals and then the finals on the, the side rings around the yeah I think every final and semi-final should be in the center ring yeah yeah especially yeah. me because I like to watch the fights as well like other people fighting <laughs> but that was so. it I thought like having them all especially the finals having them all on like at the same time at rings around the side I felt like you know yeah. if you were sitting back watching like you, you couldn't watch every final you had to nearly pick and choose mm. which final because they were on at the same time and they weren't in rings next to each other or anything. So that's why I feel like moving all the finals to center and then, you know, yeah. announce what announce what division it is. This is the final of whatever section. And then everybody can watch and uh, appreciate the two people who made it to the final. Yeah. They should have like, uh, like they had in uh, Bosnia now, like I think they had in Maribor as well, like a show at the end of the day with everything in the center ring, like the finals. That would be cool. The only thing with something like that is it just it makes the day very long. Yeah, it doesn't have to be everything on the same day, but they could be like, they split it up in two days. Like every final is fought like on Saturday and everything is in a center ring. So. In Slovenia in 2012, they kind of had, it was nearly like a gala every night. It's like so they, yeah. they so they saved the finals. So they had maybe f- four fights 
every evening. But it was mostly mm-hmm. you had to kind of get lucky and be against Slovenia in the final. <laughs> you had to get like uh, a place at the gala. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like that. Yeah. If you didn't, now there was a couple of there was some fights where Slovenia weren't in the final, and uh, they put it on the center stage to just because it was going to be a good match. Like Dimitri, you know, you the guy Dimitri and Tura. They uh, they had them in the final as well. Where in uh, Maribor? Yeah, in 2012. <laughs> So, oh, 2012, yeah. I thought we, was, we were oh. talking about uh, the last year I was in Maribor. No, oh, the one before in Maribor. <laughs> they uh, had, yeah, there was a finals night every every night, four or five fights, mostly with people from Slovenia in the finals. But uh, yeah, there was a couple of matches that were just going to be good matches and they, they left, uh, they put that onto the, the kind of gala night at the end. Yeah. Mine is 63 final. Yeah. They yeah. did that the... Uh, in 2017. Yours in 2017. It wasn't in Maribor. 2018 was Maribor. 18. Again. 18. 18. Yeah. 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 Then I had the minus 63 final there as well. At the gala. Yeah. 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 Uh, Luke McGrath and uh, the other Russian Mars. guy. Yeah. Davi something. From he, was, he used to be 57 before. Yeah, he's a big boy for 57. He was 57 in uh, Scotland. He, oh, lost he was? To, yeah, he lost to uh, Tito. Tiziano Trimboli. Yeah, from uh, Italy. Yeah, he lost to him in the semi-final. Cause I, thought, I thought he was like, new, a uh, Russian guy. Uh, I, I thought he was as well. I didn't really remember him. Until uh, it was Luke had said, "Oh, he fought in Scotland in 2015." Um, he reminded me. He reminded me. Then I kind of then I recognised him because I actually thought after I got to the final, I thought, "Oh, he's going to come through from the other side," because he beat um, he beat Yari as well, Yari Ramberg, and he he was yeah. after the final of the world. So I thought, like, this guy must this guy is obviously good. So I thought he's probably going to get through. And then I had seen then that, that Tito had came through. So. Uh, it was a bit of a change in game plan. <laughs> he doesn't compete anymore, does he? The Italian uh, guy. I haven't uh, seen him in quite a while. Uh, he didn't compete in 2019. Um, I think he's taking a break for the moment. But uh, yeah. yeah, seems like we're all taking a break at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> oh. And uh, in Bosnia, you were saying you were going to switch to to MMA is that still the plan yeah I was thinking about it and uh, uh, like uh, (laughs) uh, our trainers were like uh, I don't know it's a weird rule in Norway that you can't be on a national team and do MMA for some reason so you would have to stop Taekwondo to go to MMA yeah. But MMA, did you say it wasn't, it's not legal in Norway, is that? Did you say that? Yeah, it's illegal in Norway. Like you can train MMA, but you can't compete in Norway. Yeah. Did so you have to like change? travel to Sweden and Denmark to fight. You think that will change anytime soon? I think so. Like boxing was illegal here as well for like three years ago. I thought it became legal, full contact boxing. Really? Yeah. I thought boxing. And we have like a huge uh, Norwegian champion, Cecilia Brakus, uh, yeah. in women's boxing, and she fought like here in uh, Norway when it became legal. I think it was like three, four years ago. What weight division? Uh, um, I think she has like four different uh, weight division type. I think she is. She's world champion in 
welterweight. Oh, okay. I was going to. So she's uh, she's yeah, heavier four than belts. Katie. Okay, so she's she's heavier than Katie Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say uh, maybe that could be a fight that could be made or something, you know, down the line. Um, but the, the different weights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was talking about fighting Holly Holm because uh, right. she be a world champion in boxing as well. Yeah. Do you think? Um, do you think? Do you think you eventually will go to MMA? I don't know. I think so. Maybe. Maybe not. I right, well, see, see if you can see if you can defend that world title first. Yeah. Maybe that's what I have to do. Two times world champion and then go to then go to MMA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I don't know. I felt like uh, if I won the Euros, I would probably that would be enough for me as well. So. Yeah, win one of each. <laughs> yeah. You have one of each, don't you? Yeah, one of each European cha- European champion, world champion. One so. in uh, Scotland. Scotland, yeah. That was I was in the final twice before that and uh, and lost. So fi- yeah, finally, you were in the final in Skövde in Sweden. Yeah, and then uh, Richie Arne then as well. So uh, it's gonna, I had to I had to win the third time. <laughs> And uh, You're staying in minus fifty-seven still. Oh yeah, for another bit of time anyway, and then maybe I'll go to sixty-three. Quick. Like, how much are you uh, like off-season? Do you have to cut much weight? Right now, I'm about I think about sixty-six. Sixty-six. Yeah. I was. Then you have some <laughs> some weight to uh, touch, yeah. Yeah, before Euros was cancelled, I was down at around. Uh, I was well on track. Like I was down at sixty four. So um, then I gave. I was. It was about six weeks. So then I was because, like I, I tried to get down to about sixty one, the week before, and then the last week then is kind of the big weight cut, like you know the main <laughs> water load and you know, many yeah. salt, fiber, and carbs, and you know. Get in this. We get get the sweats on and sweats mm. sweat off some weight and then finish with the sauna or whatever. So that was only last week. So I was I was well on track to to make it fairly fairly handy, but uh, obviously it got called off. So I'm up a I'm up a little bit now. So yeah, I remember seeing you in uh, Bosnia. Yeah, you were just taking the <laughs> elevator up or something. You and Thomas. Uh. That was um that was my worst like. That was my worst cut. Actually, I had, I probably had like, I had a bad cut in Finland, but I think that was like just wasn't really fully educated on how to do it well. And then, so yeah. I just like did did it badly. I didn't have a lot to cut. I just did it badly. And um, mm. then uh, Bosnia, I just had a lot to cut. So that, that's why it was in a bad way. But we got through it. <laughs> yeah. I remember yeah. seeing you. You guys looked like you were dying. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't walk. Like I could only walk about five steps, and it was kind of like I really feel like I need to stop and take a break, and uh, yeah. get my breath back. But I hadn't. See, when we flew over as well, I hadn't slept, so we flew out like Monday night, Tuesday morning. So I didn't sleep on Monday, and then we were into yeah. Tuesday. So then it was into Tuesday night, and I hadn't slept all like at all. So I didn't sleep Tuesday night either. By the time the way, by the time I actually properly slept again, it was. I slept Sunday night and it was Wednesday night before I slept. I went Monday, Tuesday and all of Wednesday without sleeping. Cause, uh, obviously I was that because for... of the weight cut? Yeah. One day, but the first day I didn't sleep because on Monday night I didn't sleep because of when we were flying. And then Tuesday night I didn't sleep because like that I was just thirsty, hungry, couldn't yeah. sleep. <laughs> so, uh, like it was, it was get up every I was getting up every hour, 
It's like try and go to the toilet, see if I could squeeze a little bit out, step on the scales. Okay, I'm on weight. Go back to bed. Try and you know toss and turn in bed for a little bit. Get up for it the next hour. Step on the scales. Okay, I'm still on weight. And I just did that for like ten hours nearly. It felt like it just felt like it was going on forever. At like six o'clock in the morning, Thomas, Thomas and Owen, Owen O'Brien, like they came into they came into my room just to check. Like they couldn't sleep either, so they came in to, to check their weight. To like, am I still on weight? Like it was just it was a rough time. Yeah. So I wouldn't do it like that again, but uh okay. It, I, I did what I had to do to make it, you know. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, that's what happens. So I don't yeah. know, like like that was I don't know how like you see some MMA guys cut so much weight. It's just so hard, like just Yeah, and they cut like six five kilos of water weight. Yeah. On the <laughs> same day. On the same day, yeah. Because like, I like that, like I tend to be sixty one the week before. So it's like you're cutting four kilos across five days. Like they'd be coming and going like the day before. I am sixty one yeah. and I'm gonna cut those four kilos on the same day I'm like how can you do it like, just to spend that much time in the sauna or in a bath is just no no way yeah yeah but like the MMA guys are like extremists when it comes to weight cutting especially like like the bigger guys uh, like Paula Costa you know what that is yeah. I think he was he fought 185 right yeah middleweight yeah yeah, I think I read somewhere that he was like 218, two, uh, 220, 218 on the fight day. So he gained like insanely amount of weight. He's massive. He's huge. Have you seen him now? He's yeah. looking thick. Yeah, he's very thick. <laughs> did, you see, did you see him at the Joel Romero and Adesanya fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was looking big, wasn't he? Yeah, he's, he could probably do heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Well, do you think over? T- yeah, actually, yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely over two or five. Like, <laughs> same with uh, like Romero. I don't like if you compare like uh, like Taekwondo guys and like welterweight guys, like the sheer size of them, how much difference it is? It's insane. Yeah, but like you don't need to have like th- their like body type doesn't really wouldn't suit really taekwondo. Yeah, like the main reason they cut weight is because of wrestling. Yeah, it doesn't make that much sense to be like if you weigh five kilos more than the other guy if it's only striking. But if if it's wrestling and you have to like keep him down and he's on top of you, it's much harder. Yeah. I think like think of someone like uh like Tyron Woodley. Like he's not built really he's not gonna be kicking very well, I don't think. Maybe powerful, but inside yeah, in he's like explosive, fight, but yeah. You see him picking up that front leg, like attacking, boom, 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 boom. Mm. <laughs> he's not gonna be doing that like <laughs> Yeah. But that point fighting style seems to work in MMA. Well I like that. Taekwondo, karate style. It seems to work yeah. pretty good. Like Stephen Thompson. Yeah, like Stephen Thompson, uh, Raymond Daniels, MVP. Yeah. I like Adesanya's style. He comes from kickboxing. Not points kickboxing, but I love, I love his style. Yeah, he has a very like clean, crisp style. Yeah. Never he's, off balance. He's probably my favorite fighter at the moment, is Adesanya. It's just that that style yeah. is just it's class. And, yeah, uh, I like Zabit actually. Zabit, yeah, he's yes. not he's not a cool style. Yeah, you like never lost. know what to expect when he's fighting. <laughs> could have lost if his last fight was five rounds. He could have lost. Yeah, you know what they say: like if you're explosive, like your weakness is stamina. The yeah. same with Connor; yeah. like super explosive. But like he doesn't have good stamina. Yeah, I guess it's like a trade-off, isn't it? It's like you can't be good at everything, so you have to. Yeah. Like you never see Nate Diaz have like uh, Tyron Woodley power. 
<laughs> no. last 10, 50 rounds if he has to. I think as well, like, you know, like, you probably see yourself, like, like you know, you said, you're, you're in that kind of playful style and uh, that kind of playful mood. You'll nearly, like, you'll go a lot more rounds than if you're kind of all worked up and that, uh, you know, and I think, like, because you just kind of get in a bit of a flow. And I think they just get, they just, yeah, it's all it's about like they just, stress, you're stressing yeah, all the time. Yeah. They just get in a flow, like just they're just going to keep coming at you and just letting strikes go. Not not powerful strikes, just keep hitting you over and over. And they don't stress about like if you hit me, uh, who cares? Yeah, my my eye is cut. Uh, who cares? They're just relaxed yeah. and keep coming forward. And I think just get into that flow state of just, just keep walking forward and swinging strikes. Yeah. So they don't get like tired. you notice it very easily. Also in Taekwondo, when you're like fighting someone who's not. Like if you're instructing and you're like showing different exercises to your uh, students and you feel like play fighting with them, you see how exhausted they get. Yeah. When you're just like playing. Yeah. And so like, uh, what is your kind of obviously before the injury and before coronavirus? What was your what would your training schedule look like? Uh, well, I work a full time, uh, so. After work, I go to like uh, strength training. Not because like I have to, but I just enjoy training. So I do yeah. that. Then I have uh, instructions, and uh, then I do like taekwondo training. Then I go home, sleep, repeat the same day. <laughs> so you do that pretty much every day. So you do taekwondo. Six days, five, six days a week? I don't train Taekwondo five, six times a week, but like uh, it was periods when I used to instruct like Monday and to Friday. Yeah. Almost every day. And then like you strength train five, five, six days a week as well? Yeah. And do you do like, do you program all that yourself or do you have kind of somebody who helps you? No, I just like, off YouTube and uh, <laughs> yeah it's not that hard to like work out when it comes to weights I feel like especially nowadays nowadays you can just like search up anything on YouTube or Google and it's right there for you yeah that was kind of how that was how I started uh, into like when I first started uh, strength training it was a lot of stuff off YouTube and uh, I think you kind of I, I kind of started with like you know you're more like YouTube or fitness people, like you know, uh, like, say Christian Guzman and some guys like that. And yeah. uh, but then, like as I got more into it, then I kind of got more in towards like more scientific stuff, like more people who were worrying less about making nice videos, nice vlogs, like and more like just putting out information about uh about training. So uh, I think that that's where like I got most of my like base on knowledge on how to uh and how to train yeah because you can find very different opinions when it comes to strength uh strength training on uh, uh online so you don't quite know 100 percent sure what's correct and what's not but the middle <laughs> yeah in the middle somewhere <laughs> somewhere in the middle yeah and uh do you do much like uh in terms of cardio stuff or anything for fitness uh anything specific. like the only cardio i do is take one no i think yeah so just spare rounds yeah i hate running <laughs> last time i went for a run there. in 2015 i think <laughs> yeah i don't i don't run either yeah i always say if there's food if there's food i'll run yeah, <laughs> but I feel like everyone says running is essential for like martial arts and fighting. Everyone says that. I know. Yeah, I think it comes from the the boxing idea of you have to. Yeah, they have like road work. So, and I think that's like even they're kind of. I think they'd be like wrong to some degree. Like in terms of like, oh, you have to run to like you know get your legs strong and have your legs under you. You have to run and it conditions the legs. I wouldn't think it's like the most effective way for even a boxer to condition their legs or like to stay, to be able to stay on their toes or anything like that. It's, it doesn't yeah. seem like it would be effective. So yeah, I don't run either. 
<laughs> yeah yeah but boxing is more like uh it's it's like science i don't think like if you're strong it doesn't help you anything in boxing like the science of getting hit no not getting hit and hitting is like it's fascinating to watch actually yeah like i think it, like strength i think does play a part but like definitely not as as much as like maybe like like that maybe MMA does it does in MMA. You still yeah. need to have good. You still need to have good skill. I think like maybe Deontay Wilder is the only one who could, was getting away for so long with not being very skillful and just having lots of power. But I don't think you get like you, you don't be the best in the world at like the lower weight divisions by just having power. Yeah. You see that Lomachenko. He doesn't. He's not known for having power. He just like. Just so skillful. What I think is crazy about his skill is that, like the the uh, once you have like three stoppages, I think it's three stoppages, definitely two, but it could be. I think it's three. But guys just didn't get off the stool. They just went in the corner and just like they weren't hurt or anything. They just went, no. Yeah, I can't. no, Mastanko. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just went, oh, I'm just, I'm not having I'm not having any more of that. Just I'm just not coming out. I'm just gonna sit here. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. I saw the interview of one guy he fought that gave up from uh, Jamaica thing, and he said like he didn't. He felt like he was just wasting time because he didn't feel like he was able to do anything. He was so frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, Nicholas Nicholas Walters is uh, I think is his name. Yeah, Nicholas Walters. Yeah, he just gave up. <laughs> so the same at Rigondo. Yeah. and got Rigondo is like. Yeah, that was have... surprising. I didn't expect that to happen actually. Yeah. Just didn't come out, didn't come out for the, was it like the 11th yeah. round? Was it, no, no more, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and he has power. So his arm like, was broken or something. Yeah, but he has power. Like when he lands, like he can, he can hit hard, but he just even felt like I'm not going to hit him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that was the first time actually like two Olympic gold medalists fought each other. No, two time Olympic gold medalists. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, and Regan Diaw has also too, I think. And uh, okay, do you see like Khabib and Tony is cancelled? It's not hundred percent cancelled, is it? Or is it like Khabib can't get out of Russia? Ah, uh, bullshit. I think if they if they get on to get on to if they if he wants to get out of Russia, because they've apparently closed the borders. But I think get on to Putin and say, you know. We need to get this one guy out of Russia for a fight. I think he'd, uh, I think he'd pull a few strings. Yeah, of course they would. They don't care about that stuff in Russia. <laughs> so that's what, so. Apparently, it's not going to happen. Which. Yeah, they so, were talking about maybe uh, Gaethje fighting. I'm not interested in that anymore. It's like, just don't even bother having a, a card or a fight. Just, just leave it until this yeah. all is down. So like, the only thing I was interested in seeing was Khabib and Tony. Like other yeah. than that. Like, just, just leave it off. Yeah, I heard the fight is cursed. The fifth time that this fight was supposed to happen and is getting cancelled. Who do? It's maybe a stupid question, but who do you think would win? Yeah, I thought Khabib would win, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you never know against Tony because he's. I don't know. He's so. Like, you never know with that guy. Yeah. I thought Tony would win. I've been yeah. saying it for a year. Yeah, I've been saying, well, I've been saying it for like three years. I think Tony's the only guy who could beat Khabib with just his, uh, like his forward pressure. He just keeps coming on. He keeps coming at you. And uh, even off then, like, if you take him down, even off his back, he can throw elbows. He can throw up submissions. I think, you know, just take him down. He's going to be dangerous. And like Khabib, a couple of times you've seen it against Ali Quinta, he got a bit tired late. Like it's a fight got later on, and McGregor won the third round against him. So he does tire a small bit, and I think you know, Tony, Tony gets stronger in the fourth and fifth round. Yeah, but I've seen him fight. Uh, I saw when he fought Kevin Lee uh, and some other wrestlers, uh, and he has a he struggles a lot when he's fighting wrestlers. Yeah, guys who are used to being on the ground and used to grappling. Yeah, but I just can't see myself like Khabib tapping. Like, I don't yeah. see myself Tony submitting him. 
No, but if he chokes him out, then. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I don't like. I don't see him getting caught in anything, except Dustin, like. Uh, well, Dustin Poirier had the guillotine. Eh. Or did he? <laughs> I think he did for, for a split second. I thought. I thought he had it. I thought he was not that Khabib would tap, but I thought he had. Uh, I thought he might choke him out, and then Khabib kind of just adjusted and uh, managed to get his head out. But yeah, I thought for a split second, I thought Poria might choke <laughs> him out here. Well, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad part. Yeah. Uh, I just hope this fight doesn't get cancelled. They could cancel everything, like the prelims, like the other fights. Just have like this one fight, specific fight happen. I think. Do you think? Like, I think it was Ryan. I was saying that. Do you think that like that would sum those guys up? Just those uh, two guys in a room, no crowd, just have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> just have a they're camera both, on them. On yeah, they're both the fight. type of characters, you know, like like that seem like you know like Khabib with the whole like you know send location and that like it's just. Yeah, they probably that's, agreed to that as well. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, they're those type of guys. Is like, just look, just set up. Not even, don't even need a ring. Like, we'll just have a, we'll just have a fight. Just let's just go. On. Like, do you know what I mean? They just, yeah. they don't seem like, it, like the did fact that. The, did you see the last UFC event with no crowds? Yeah, that was so weird. Yeah, but I felt like that was better. Did like, you could hear the shots landing and everything. Everything was so clear. There was yeah. no like background noise. But did you think the, the commentary was weird? I thought it was like they you know they're they're like whispering for the commentary. Because <laughs> like they because in the ring they would be able to be able to hear them speaking. So you know like that's what you, if they're saying like oh what, what the the fighter needs to do like oh he needs to you know step over the leg here or whatever like the guys in the ring would hear that so like they kind of had to speak a little bit lower. And uh, I go, oh, uh, a good job. Like, I kind of prefer, you know, like Rogan going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm fighting, I'm like one meter away from my coach and I still can't hear what he's saying. You're not hearing, no? Yeah. I've, uh, I've, I get used to it. Um, is, uh, is it always the same person who coaches you? At your Yeah, I only, had, I only had a Lilius coach. Yeah. I think that helps because you get used to hearing that same voice. Like obviously, like Adrian's my coach, so you know after seventeen years, you get used to you get used to hearing him. Yeah. Well, on like uh, I only have Billy as coach like on the national tournaments. Like no, I mean uh, with the national team tournaments, like the Euros and the Worlds. But everything else, I have like Espen. Espen as my coach. I think is he quiet in the chair? I, I think he will be quiet. No, he, yeah, but we have like a mutual understanding, like like what he wants to hear and what I want to hear. I just want to know the time and uh like the warnings. Okay. And when it's uh like when Willie's coaching, he's always like psyche, 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 psyche. Like Yeah. Like you win more if Willie's your coach, but uh it's nicer <laughs> to have Espen. It's more a laid-back uh, situation. <laughs> okay, so it depends on the tournament, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And how how often do um in Norway do you have national team trainings? Uh, once every six months, I think. Is that all? Yeah, that's all. We go once, but once every two weeks, nearly here. Once every two weeks, yeah. Really? In the lead up to a, in the lead up to a tournament, yeah. So like we started in January, had a squad session, and then it's pretty much every two weeks. Now there is there was a well actually there was about a month we had one in January, and then we didn't have another one till February because we had like Open Dutch it was I think the week after the first squad session, and then the week after that was we had Munster Open, so we had one of our national competitions, and then it was the week after that. So it was about three or four weeks of a gap between the squad sessions but after that then it pretty much works out at once every two weeks yeah I think uh, leading up to competitions we have like once every two three months I think like if we're going to the worlds I think we have like two uh, 
two national team trainings before that. And that's it. Yeah, well, Norway's a lot bigger. Like, how long would it take you if you live in the north of Norway to get to the south? You know, how long would that take? Yeah, if you live in the north, it's quite a while. But, like, for me to go to, like, Trondheim, it takes one hour with, plane, uh, with the plane. So, it's not that much. Plane. On a plane, yeah, but you can, see, in Ireland, you can pretty much drive anywhere in, like, drive, yeah, yeah, yeah. three hours. Much easier. So, like, if we go to, like, if the squad, se- if the session is in Dublin from where we live, it takes maybe just over two hours to drive. And like that, like, so then, so like, that's the most, like, we'd have to travel. So, that's why yeah, everybody it's, can get It's easier when it's uh, anywhere. that close. But... I feel like the squad sessions help a lot then because like you get all the best people to get to come and train with each other and spar with each other. Yeah. But do you have like, uh, like do you have special, like on some days you only have like matching and sparring? Uh, we have like the squad session would have two sparring sessions and then there'll be a pattern session in there as well and then a team pattern session if there's going to be teams. This year, we, we weren't going to have team patterns this year. But uh, usually there'd be a team pattern session in there as well. Yeah. So you don't do like uh, exercise and stuff like that? So like the one session would be like you'd have like just sparring rounds. So just jump in, go and spar. The whole uh, session? Yeah. So about an hour and a half, hour and 15. But like we kind of build it up. So like the first squad session, you maybe do um, one 90 second round so a minute and a half one 90 minute round and then both people go out and then like you just maybe do lots of them and then yeah like as the squad session moves on then like the, maybe the next squad session you might do two one and a half minute rounds and we change up the rest time and eventually before the tournament then like the last squad session look to do get five rounds of two two minute rounds in so kind of we build it up that way so uh yeah so that's kind of one session and the other sparring session then is kind of like a kind of a mix between uh kind of some skill work and stuff like you know a bit more condition spare like oh one person has maybe psychic and turning kick and the other person has whatever shots you know that maybe interact there or else you know we maybe some then into maybe like there might be some point sparring or or maybe you have to score a combination which you hand you have to score a hand yeah. technique, you know, foot technique something that way a bit more skill skill based it's kind of what tends to be in the second session, so that it's not just full on uh, kicking the shit out of each other. Do you have like tryouts for people like who are new, uh, new and supposed to come on a team? Yeah. Or do uh, like get invited from the national uh, nationals results or something? Uh, it was kind of we use usually pick one of the tournaments so sometimes it's you know you'd use the national championships that that person gets picked or else sometimes it's one of the other national tournaments depending like if the tournament's in october like for the worlds in ireland we used the dublin open uh, so like the tournament we have in uh march to pick for the worlds that was like a selection competition so if you won that you got that you were selected and then the the second and third spot are picked then by the coaches so it's kind of how it goes Sometimes yeah. then there's like a, f- a fight off at the squad session. Like if there's, especially you know, sometimes the third spot for juniors, it can be very hard, especially if there's new people to decide like, oh, well, who's going to be, who is better. So they come to the squad session and then sometimes they'll have a fight off with a couple of people and the coaches then will pick. But uh, yeah, like at senior, like a lot of the spots, you probably even see in Norway, they can nearly pick themselves to some degree at senior. Yeah. Mm. I was like, hey, it's a lot of the same people there isn't many new people coming in to take spots and like that with, with work and college like sometimes you know people drop out of one spot but then it gets filled and like that there's always a there's never like too much uh, argument over the senior spots or junior because you have the the three and so there's a lot more of them that can be uh, a bit trickier to pick yeah. How, who's the best junior on the team now Best junior on the team. Um, <laughs> I'd say, I'd say uh, Camille. Yeah, Camille. the plus 73. 75? Uh, minus. Minus 75. Yeah, he fights. Yeah, me and Richie were saying the last squad, squad session, he's very like um, like Adam. 
to some degree. Like he's like yeah. Adam, Adam. When Adam was kind of his last junior tournament, he's he's very much has that kind, he has that kind of style. And like we said, he's tall with a good front leg. So <laughs> yeah, but there's one of good he won person. now in the Euros, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. To get, he beat another Irish guy in the final, Bartosz. They're from the same club. Kamil and Barto sounds very Polish to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, there's another guy from their club. He got a uh, he got bronze, and his name is Laird. He he's a uh, oh. yeah Laird. Um, I can't remember his second name, but uh, yeah. So like they they were all the three guys, not very Irish names, but but like the Hong isn't a very Irish name either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh. But yeah, we have some good juniors. We have some very good juniors coming through, um, even at the lighter weights. So it's a shame you always got cancelled. To I think it would have been good for them. Yeah, who's the best senior then? Best senior. <laughs> uh, one of the girls. Is it you, Jamie? <laughs> not me, no. no, not me. It's one of the girls. <laughs> Sarah's won the most, so we we'll go with Sarah. Sarah. She won the Euros as well, right? Her and her sister. Yeah. Sarah's won the Euros three years in a row now. And Worlds as well. I won a Worlds there, so she's the best senior. Did, she didn't win the Worlds uh, in Germany, did she? No, 2017. 2017. Yeah, I think it was someone from Germany who won. In in Germany. In Germany, yeah. Andrea Sinner, is that right? Someone from uh I don't know. She fought the uh, Urska in the final. Yeah, and I think it's I think yeah, I think Stop. it's Andrea Sinner. I think that's her name. Mm, maybe. Be wrong. It's probably I should know their names. Yeah. How do they um? How do they pick the team in Norway? Uh, like the first stage is like national, or uh, the nationals. They look at the results from the nationals and stuff like that, and different uh like championships that you attend to. And then you're invited to the national team training. And I think we have like one session with everyone, and the second session is like with the team who got picked. Okay, and uh, well, I was going to say then, like, it, is it's only the team that could go to the squad sessions, but you don't have many squad sessions, so that's not really a really a thing. Yeah, it's like the whole junior team is now uh, entirely new, almost. So, be a lot of new gen- juniors, but the senior team, well, the senior team is new as well, or not new, but a lot of people have like quit taekwondo or taking a break. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. We've actually been we've actually been chatting for quite a while, but I have uh maybe I have two more questions before we kind of we, we could finish up. Um I've been asking a couple of people recently, uh so who's your uh, favorite fighter of all time? Any any combat sport, MMA, boxing, taekwondo, kickboxing, any combat sport, favorite fighter of all time? Uh I think that would be, have to be uh it's not take one though, everything right everything uh, i think that would have to actually be fedor oh nice different you know what that is fedor emilienko yeah yeah and uh any particular reason uh it's just, it's just the way like he acts like like if you see his ring ring entrance and stuff like that he just walks out. There's no emotions on his face, and uh, he was undefeated quite a while. Uh, and he, it's kind of funny because he doesn't look like a fighter. He has like he has the yeah. ultimate dad bod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but he's like, like, yeah. And I remember seeing him fighting in Pride and stuff like that because. Then it looked like they didn't have any weight classes. It was like the biggest guys against 
the biggest guys. Yeah. And he would submit or knock everyone out. Yeah, so like he was just so calm. Up in Neguera, his brothers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Fedor, that's a different one. And uh, yeah. the, the follow-up then to that is the fa- favourite fight of all time. Again, any any sport. Favourite fighter of all time? A favourite fight. Favourite fight? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to pick, you have to pick, sit down and you have to, there's one fight you, you have to, you want to watch or you can pick to watch. What are you going to pick? Uh... Oh, that was an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> it gets you thinking. Uh, yeah. I'll just pick some uh, recent fight and say uh, Paula Costa versus uh, Real Romero. Ooh, good fight. Good fight, yeah. No, no, no. I'll, change my mind. I'll say Israel Adesanya versus Calvin Gaslam. I had a feeling when you said recent fights, I thought you were going to pick that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my favourites as well. That is one of my favourites. We've had a, I've had a few, like, I, actually, I won't say who they are. Actually, no, I won't say. You'll have to listen to the podcast to find out what the other people said. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I listen to, uh, how many do we have now? The last one was Gillis. Uh, yeah, it was episode eight. Yeah. So they're, they're building up. We we'll have a couple of, have another couple of lined up after this. Not today, but in the rest of the rest of the week. And uh, there's yeah. a few more that I recorded last week. So they're building up. We're back. We're back at it. So, but yeah, man, it was, uh, it's been good to have a chat. Yeah, it was a pleasure. That's good Thank to have you. you yeah. Oh, just for doing it. Yeah. Um, Take care, man. Yeah, you too. And, uh, Good luck with uh, Corona stuff. <laughs> I don't. I don't want any of that Corona stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, we're safe. We're young. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's the family members you don't want to be giving it to. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's been good, man. And uh, like that, I hope you you stay stay healthy and recover. Thank you. Ready, ready to go in 2021. Yeah, I'll be back in 2021. <laughs> nice. The comeback. The comeback. But uh, yeah, yeah, go on, man. I will uh, leave it there, all right? Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Bye. Thanks.